Yeah, I used to, uh, I did used to describe it as uh, the best real estate in the world, but not necessarily the best um, space. I would draw a distinction. The White House, like, so, you know, the West Wing is different from the White House. Um, the, the White House itself is, a, is, a, is a, an unbelievable venue and a beautiful venue. I mean, the East Room and the, the residence that, that Trump has. So I, I was a bit off put by that comment because I, I took it as this, the, the, the mansion, which by the way, also, you know, you are acutely aware of the history of the place, you know, um, uh, you you uh, walk past a wall that is still scarred by the British burning down the White House in the War of 1812, or there's the official portrait of Abraham Lincoln, or here's a room where like Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation. You know, so part of what I, I think you do appreciate is we're all temporary occupants of this place, and some of the people who went before are, are, are Abraham Lincoln. And George Washington, <laughs> well, actually not, not Washington because White House, but Abraham Lincoln and FDR and the height of World War II. So, you know, that makes it harder, I think, to see Trump, you know, uh, in the way in which he kind of approaches what should be kind of a, a sacred place. Now, I will say that the West Wing itself is is not. I used to watch a TV show and laugh because it's really big and, and <laughs> spacious. My office was tiny. That they had a ceiling drop down because there are all these cables in it that, you know, encrypted the president's communications, or um, and and it did feel very cloistered. The thing about that though is it made you incredibly close to the people you worked with, physically but also emotionally, because you're just in this very tight, small space trying to deal with these very hard problems, usually in windowless rooms, um, and so uh, I think that the the surroundings of the West Wing, what they did do is just even further accelerate that sense of a team and that sense that you know we were all in something uh, together. I think the film does a great job of showing um, some of the trappings and glamour, you know, there's Air Force One, and but then some of the, you know, these are people eating lunch from a carryout window sitting in a windowless office just trying to get things done and the only way they can do that is, um, is if they're together. I think what also showed, and the last thing I'd say on this is, um, it's all the more important to get out. I mean, talk about being, you can be cloistered in there. I, I started trying to travel, not just with Obama, where you're in a bubble, but travel by myself, you know, talk to young people and, 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 and as well as foreign ministers in foreign countries, um, so that you aren't just sitting in your windowless room in the West Wing, feeling besieged or feeling validated. You're, you're getting diverse views.